do you know that not only the admins in your organization can create guest accounts in your Azure Active Directory, but the normal users of Microsoft 365 services are also creating guest accounts in your Azure Active Directory. It doesn't matter whether they have permissions to do that or not, but they are actually creating guest accounts in your Azure AD. Well, in this video, we're going to look at how to create these guest accounts and how these accounts are actually getting created by your users. Let's have a look how this all works. I'm currently logged on to portal.azure.com and then I'll click on Azure Active Directory. Under that, I'll click on users. Now under users, we can actually create guest accounts. Now one way of creating guest accounts is actually logging in through Azure Active Directory like we did and going on to the user section and then we click on new user. Now, because we are actually creating a guest account, so that won't be a user within our organization. So we need to click on invite external user. Once we do that, then we need to provide an email address. So let's say I'm going to add a guest account for my Gmail account, which is toshitb50 at gmail.com. So I'll type in that. Um, we can provide a display name. Let's say toshitb guest, right? Um, there is an option whether you want to send an invite message to the user, right? That's one. Um, if you select this option, you can actually write your personalized message as well. Hey, Toshit, um, welcome to the team. And then we click on next. Now, these are the other properties. Um, it's optional whether you want to, you know, fill out all this whole information or not. But I guess that's a good idea to know, you know, who you are actually adding. We have already added a display name. So let's just say we want to add the first name and last name as well. And you can add some additional information, you know, the job title, company, department, um, you know, all of these things. And we then go on next assignments. Now, this is basically used if you want to right now add them to any groups, right? Or if you want to assign any role to them. But in a normal typical scenario, if you are actually using or adding these guest users, what are you actually doing is you basically just want to add those guest users into your Azure AD and you leave that to your you know, normal users of the organization, whether they're, you know, they want to share documents with them or not. But again, um, it all comes down to the requirements. So if you are going to add, you know, all of these guest users to any particular roles or to any groups that you have created in your Azure AD, then that's the place um, to do that. Um, to do that, obviously you can click on add group and you can select a group uh, from the right hand side, you can search for it. I, I don't have many groups, so I don't need to search for it. But you know, you can actually select a group and add them to a group. Uh, we won't do that. Um, and then we click on next review and invite. So and then the next page will basically show you, you know, whatever you have filled in, you can verify all the details. And then you click on invite. Now, because I have, you know, um, ticked that invite message option, that email option. Uh, I'm going to receive an email on my Gmail account that, you know, I've been added. So we can go on to the Gmail account and let's see if I have received anything. Um, so here you go. I've received an email which basically says, Toshit Bhardwaj invited you to this organization, to this domain, and that's the custom message. So this is what your um, guest users are actually going to receive. Um, and they can accept the invitation or they can actually block future inv invitations from this particular organization. So let's just say accept the invitation. Okay, before we click on accept invitation, let's just have a look what actually happened in our Azure AD. So we go back to the users and um, let's just refresh it. And that's the guest account, Toshit B guest that we actually created. So. You know, that's, that's one way um, of actually adding guest accounts, which is typically performed by your admins. Now, if you have number of users that you want to invite, um, you know, you can actually use bulk operations as well. So 
to invite uh, multiple guest accounts, you can click on bulk operations and say bulk invite. Now, once you do that, it basically opens up this pane. Um, now, there are three steps if you are going to invite bulk users. So Microsoft basically gives you a template to fill in. It's a fairly simple template. Let's have a look, um, you know, what the template looks like. So I click on download and um, I've got this here now. Let me bring it here. So that's the template, um, you know, a CSV file template there. Um, all it asks for is basically an email address of the person you're going to invite. And the next column is about the redirection, which is basically uh, the URL. Um, what this, this is the URL that you, your users will actually get in an email. And the next column is about send invitation method, whether it's true or false. If you have it true, the you, your guest users are going to receive an invitation email like we did in my Gmail account. Um, if you make it false, then there will be no email sent out to them. So, you know, I can make it false as well. The next column is about the customized message, right? This is where you can write a custom message um, when you are going to invite your users. This will only work if this is true, uh, because otherwise your users won't receive an email if you have this false. So, you know, these are the different um, columns that you need to fill in. So, you know, uh, all, all it takes is about providing a Gmail, um, not the Gmail address, but basically the email address of your guest users. So let's just say I want to put in toshitp50 at gmail.com and that's the redirection URL and that's false and that's the message, right? Um, you can create multiple users here. So for example, john at xy z.com and you need to fill in the same information for john as well so make sure all of these um, columns are basically populated for all of your users so you know in this way you can actually have uh, numbers of users or maybe you know hundreds of users um, in the in the template and you save your template once you've saved your template then the next step is obviously edit your csv file which we have done that and then we basically upload the csv file so once we click on the upload, then we are just going to upload this file and it says file uploaded successfully. And then we are just going to submit it. You know, once you submit it, then it's basically just going to invite the user. So let's just say submit, right? So this has submitted and you want to know the progress of, you know, what is actually happening in the background. Um, you can click on view the status of each operation. So let's click on that. Once you do that, then it's actually going to show you how many users or errors or failures it actually had. So it has two success operations, zero failure, and there were total two requests um, that we actually had in this. You can click on the numbers as well. And you can see that, you know, toshidb50 at gmail.com that's the invitation message went out there and this is success. So this is how you can actually invite bulk users, um, guest users in your uh, Azure Active Directory. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, uh, which is basically performed by your admins, right? Through the Azure Active Directory users. Now the interesting part is about how your users are actually inviting these guest users into your Azure Active Directory. Okay, so we go back to the users first. So that's toshitb50 at gmail.com and that's john at xyz.com. Um, I'm just going to delete john at xyz.com and click delete. Um, this is how you can actually delete your uh, guest accounts as well. Um, and I'm going to delete toshitb50 at gmail.com. Um, the reason I'm deleting it is because I, will, I want to show you how toshitb50 can also be created by your users. Okay, so let's just clean it up first. Let's just delete this guest account. So toshitb50 at gmail is now gone, right? So we don't have any guest user called toshitb50. One of the way basically um, you know, where your users can create these guest accounts is through Microsoft Teams. 
Everybody loves Microsoft Teams these days, you know. People are using it to collaborate with vendors, third-party vendors, um, you know, and that's a great tool by Microsoft. But when your users are actually sharing anything, let's just see what happens, okay? Let me open Microsoft Teams. I have a channel called M365 Support, right? And if I click on the Manage Team, uh, which is basically this uh, screen, and I have one owner and three guests. That's a unknown user, so I'm just going to delete that unknown user. Okay, we have three guests. Let's just try to add Toshit B50 as a guest user um, in this channel, which is typically most of your users who are actually using Teams or the team owners would be doing it or are actually doing it, right? So I want to invite Toshit B50 to this team because I want to work with Toshit B50. And Toshit B50 is from a trusted organization and, you know, or probably he's a vendor. And I want to invite him and work with him in a team's channel. So I'm just going to say add and I'm going to add Toshit B50, right? So Toshit B50 is now added. Um, it might take a while for them to show up in your members list. Okay, that's great, right? Um, it will probably show up in a moment, it's just taking its time. Let's go back to the Azure Active Directory, right? If we refresh this page, um, toshitb50 at gmail.com is actually added as a guest user, right? So this user is not added by your admins. This user is actually added by a user who is using Microsoft Teams. Now what it means is you need to keep an eye on your um, guest management or all of the external users, right? Imagine organizations are basically, you know, using Teams now. All of your users are using Microsoft Teams and they create multiple channels. And obviously they work with, you know, number of users, organizations, vendors. And they're actually sharing documents with them. They're actually adding them as, you know, members of their teams. And all of those users are actually getting added into your Azure AD as guests. It actually puts a little bit of an overhead on the admins about the management of these guest accounts, right? So this is something you need to, you know, have a look. Obviously, you can't control it, but that's the way. I mean, you can control it, um, but the need, then you basically need to have some governance policies around the team's management um, and obviously your guest management. You know, there are different tools. Um, or options or features um, which you can actually implement to govern the whole process. Okay, so that's one way. That's basically is the second way how your guest accounts are getting created through Microsoft Teams. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this user again. Um, so I'll click on delete and I'm deleting. Click on refresh. Okay, so Toshit B50 is gone. That guest account is no longer in this Azure Active Directory. Third option is through Microsoft SharePoint Online. The creation of guest accounts using Microsoft SharePoint Online by your users works a little bit different to Microsoft Teams. Let's have a look how this one works. So I have my SharePoint site open. Now I will go to site settings, site permissions, and I'll click on advanced permission settings because we want to add someone to a SharePoint site group. I mean, you can add users to the Office 365 groups as well, but this would be the same use case which we have actually seen for Microsoft Teams, right? So they will get added. Um, so these are the, my SharePoint site groups, and I'll click on the visitors group now, and I'm going to add a new user. This time, we're going to add a different user. So let's just say Tosh Pest 21 at gmail.com, right? And this is outside of your organization. Um, it is true because we are actually adding a guest user. So click on share. Now we have invited or added this user, but 
you'll see that the user is not in the group as yet. You know, we can refresh the screen and the user is not there. We can go back to our um, Azure Active Directory and basically just refresh the screen and see if the user is there or not. And Tosh test 21, I cannot find it. So the user is not added as yet. As I mentioned earlier, SharePoint Online works a little bit differently. Okay, so let's see what actually happened, you know, until now. If I go back to the email address of the user, so that user received an email that, you know, we want to share a site. And it just says, hello, go to TBT HR, right? That's it, that's the message that you users get. Okay, so let's just click on this link and open this in incognito mode, right? On this screen, it is now going to ask me to sign in, basically to accept the invitation. I'm using a personal account, so I'll sign in with a Microsoft account option. But if you are sharing with your external users who are part of an organization who's got you know, a 365 license, they will be using organizational account option to sign in. So I'll click on the Microsoft account. I'll say sign in. So it has now opened up a site for me, right? I can log on to the site, I can visit the site. Now let's go back and have a look what happened to our SharePoint groups. So I'll minimize this window and go back to our people and group section and just reload it. Now this user is now added and visible, right? Let's go back to the Azure Active Directory. Click on refresh. Okay, so Tosh Test 21 is created as we can see. Um, it's there in our Azure Active Directory. Now imagine all of your users, you know, who are actually adding users to all of your SharePoint sites and eventually creating guest accounts or guest users in your Azure Active Directory. Another interesting thing about SharePoint Online is if a user is actually trying to share a single document with an external user who's not in your, um, uh, you know, um, Azure AD as yet, um, just a fresh, you know, brand new user, brand new external user, basically. When your users are sharing a single document with these external users, when they click on the link, then those users are not actually getting added as guest users in your Azure Active Directory. So, you know, single file sharing doesn't actually add guest users, but if you add users into your SharePoint groups or Office 365 groups, they actually get added as guest users um, in your Azure Active Directory. That's it for today. This video was all about, you know, creating guest accounts in your Azure Active Directory. I will be talking more about the governance of these external users and guest accounts in your Azure AD and how you can actually control and maintain the whole process. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, please put them in the comment box um, below. Thank you very much. Have a good day.